How's everybody doing? What are we looking at today? Oh, we got some Dominaria. Um, ah, Coria. I remember that era. Theros? Throne of Eldrain? M21? So this is 20... I think this is 2018 through 2020 era background. Took me a long time to green screen this. So folks, how's everybody doing? Did you miss me? Ah. Today we're having a conversation about the turmoil post March of the Machine, also known as Mom, also known as the Stepmom set. So we had we had the aftermath set coming up. I'm gonna give you guys my opinion and a lot of the drama. So this is the product that obviously was spoiled and leaked early, and then the Pinkerton showed up, took the dude's stepsister, claimed they were doing laundry all night, all this stuff. There's just drama with this thing all over the place. Now, we are now approaching the release of the Aftermath Stepmom set, and it is a small set. The print run is tight. I got, I think, 40% of the collector box I requested, way, way lower than the regular set. So... That lines up with what we kind of expected because it's a small set. We have two, three types of people right now. So people saying, well, no serialized cards in the aftermath. No mega reprints, no easy tendies, no quick to the moons, no, this, it's going to zero. So now we've got already, as expected, and this is one of the reasons that, uh, you know, markets and wizards and Pinkertons, all this crazy crap, they get all dramatic about it when things get spoiled early. It affects the hype cycle and it becomes old news and it, it's, it's, it's a silly thing. Um, do I think this is going to be Boulder's Gate 2.0 is the question I'm getting. Um, the short answer is no, because on the surface, the supply of the collector boxes and the boxes themselves appear to be substantially reduced in line with the smaller set size. Now, do I think these things, if you buy them from your local store, your Jeff Bezos Amazon corner store, you buy from me, your LGS... Do I think you're going to double your money and make a bunch of attendees and there's all this easy opportunity to flip? No, I don't either. Um, do I think this is a complete dumpster fire useless product? No, I, I think people are being overly dramatic. Once again, as we saw in Hasbro's recent quarterly earnings report, which shocked even me. Like, I didn't think it would be bad, like everybody said, but I didn't think it was going to be that good, per se. So that was definitely surprising. Um... Everything so far this year continues to somehow push forward. I mean, the market leaders remain Pokemon in Flesh and Blood, and then followed by, well, actually, even the MetaZoo Native. But Magic themselves for 2023 so far continue to do extremely well. Whether or not that makes you angry or not, well, we can hug it out later with our mouths. But the sets are doing fine. That is the data. I mean... We just left March the Machine, the regular set. Collector boxes, including me, where everybody was selling them. I think my collector boxes, if you bought a, a case, what I sell them for? $196, $195, $199 or something. And they sold out. And, I mean, at the, it was funny because at the time of the sale, I sold like 97%. I had a couple cases left over. It didn't technically sell out when I ran that launch. But then what was really funny is the following two weeks... I mean, the amount of page was like, um, yeah, I waited to see if this crashed for and just being completely honest with you, and I respect that answer, and it's not, so can I still buy some stepmom collector boxes? So the last few cases I had ended up selling. I've requested to get more. Uh, one distributor's allocating and making it really tight, where you can only get like a couple boxes a week per store per, per week, so that's useless for me. Uh, one distributor has requested uh, from Wasi to get a little bit of the restocks. They claim they're not out, but it hasn't shown up, and... I don't know. Everything's very wishy-washy. So the point of me telling the story was March of the Machine collector boxes with these ridiculously expensive serialized cards and all this multiverse stepsister stuff, all these expensive different versions and variants. Some of these things are crazy expensive in March of the Machine collectors. And guess what? Boxes went from about that 200 point, and I believe as of this filming this video, uh, collector boxes are about 228 plus tax, so about 245 shipped with taxes and shipping on TCG Player. So we've seen about a 20% uptick from the lows just in the last few weeks because, well, everybody, including me, just sold them really cheap because everybody said, oh, it's not going to sell, it's all negative, rawr, and it didn't happen. And I thought it was a pretty cheap price for a serialized and all these things happening, and the market repriced and adjusted higher. Now, is that going to stay that way? Well, that's going to depend on, well, how well the cards hold up, how well the, the meta and people feel about the standard and the singles and how well they hold up and as far as 
serialized cards, and the regular set. And of course, whether or not Wizards finds more collector boxes or they've truly released everything. We don't know that yet. It'll take a little bit of time. So this brings me to the Aftermath set. Um, similar to March of the Machine, people are saying Aftermath is not only bad, like March of the Machine, but it's worse because it doesn't have the serialized cards. Um, you know, maybe everyone's right. Maybe the people on the other side that said this is the time that everyone's negative, that you need to get a position. We don't know. We've been, you know, there, there continues to be so much back and forth and emotion involved. It's very challenging to tell the true value and equilibrium point of these products because people are just either so negative or they're just so excited. It's very difficult to see where these prices level out. And so far, I mean, my goodness, I mean, these products this year are just doing really well. And it's not something, I, I didn't expect it to do, I didn't expect any upticks on Magic. I knew Flesh and Blood in the MetaZoo Native in the white sets, and even this new sorcery, Disney Lorcana, and obviously Pokemon. I knew most of these CCGs were going to do fine going into the year. But I didn't expect this insane bull market in Flesh and Blood. I didn't expect a lot of Weiss product to be repricing higher. And all the crazy sale clearance prices were going to rubber band back higher this quick. I thought it would take a lot longer. That's the kind of the shocker of this. So when we look at this Aftermath set. This is the first Magic set in, I don't remember, years that's been a, a mini set. A, it's been a long time, actually 10 years, since we've had like a mini supplemental Magic set. So, now that you've listened to me ramble, I'm going to be running my Patreon special this weekend and uh, coming up because this is a pre-release weekend for the Aftermath and I'll let you guys know how it goes. Um, obviously, I'm going to have some awesome pricing for everybody. Uh, definitely below market and everything. Um, and in my personal opinion, I think it's going to sell out. I really do. I mean, if these collector boxes for Mars and Machine Aftermath are 200 plus tax on TCG Player, so I don't know, was that 210, 215 ship on TCG Player with tax and shipping? I mean, if I sell these things for 179, 189, or 190 something, I mean, anywhere below that, like I don't, I don't think the downside risk versus the upside potential, the risk reward to me feels attractive at this price point. Now, of course, you know, we're going to find out if I'm right or wrong. And um, same thing with the regular epilogue booster boxes or mini booster boxes. I mean, they're cheap. I mean, you know, I'm going to be able to sell these things for, I should be able to sell these things for like 69 to 79 range, like super cheap shipped to your door. And I have a hard time believing that this is a magic product that actually has a lower price point. I understand. Less packs. Less cards per pack. It's all garbage and there's not a single card in it worth more than 69 cents. I, I know we all are going to say in the comment section. So Rudy's got to pump and dump just like I do with your stuff. But I just... The downside risk... Because if this is truly short printed and we have a lot lower supply and there's not this mega second third wave over printing which so far the last four releases in 2023... There hasn't been a single piece of evidence that anything's been overprinted in the last four sets. So you're trying to tell me the fifth set of the year here, um, which is a mini set, kind of a test thing, they're just going to overprint it and crash the market, and then they're going to go back to negative news, publicity, and crashing headlines? I just don't, I don't see it happening. Like, how many sets does Wish need to, to release to prove to the negative Nancys and the Debbie Downers that they have quietly made changes on supply and rebalancing this. Because to me, this is the fourth or fifth thing in a row. And I mean, I, I, I understand the negativity, the Magic 30, the idiots at the top, everything we went through, the Hasbro. I mean, I get it. I was there. But I mean, at the same time, we got to take the emotion out. And we got to look what's happening. So, that's very interesting. And... Um, we get ready to start the box openings back up on the channel. I want to do some mom collectors, stepmom stuff, aftermath. I want to check out this new MetaZoo native. I want to do more flesh and blood. I want to see some of these white sets that crashed and came back and some of the prices. I want to kind of get my hands on some of these cards. It's one of the way I do that. So uh, the pay I'll be sending out a sign-up sheet pretty soon to the patrons so everybody can sign up and we can get the box opening things back up and running. It's been many weeks. I think I've done like one box opening in like three, four weeks or something. Um... But that's my attitude here. 
Um, I, I just, I don't know how far and how much it's going to take for people to stop saying every Magic release is the worst set ever and being so negative. I don't know how far we're going to have to go. Unle I think Unless we literally get some insane bull market in Magic on Vintage, Sealed, Singles, Reserve List, New Cards, New Boxes, old, I, unless it's really extreme, I don't think we're going to be able to crack the negativity of all the missteps and dumb things that Wizards and Hasbro has done. Because, again, Magic 30, Fireside Chat, Cocktail Parties, Pinkertons, Overprinting, Crashing the Stock, Crashing the Sealed Pro... I mean, the amount of things that they have just completely bamboozled it is massive. So, you know, Shill Man, Rudy, I secretly work for Pinkertons now, according to, I guess, what, what, am, I, what am I doing now? I was told that I'm, I'm undercover, I'm clearly, I don't know, every week there's a new term for Rudy on here. But... You know, I go by the data. I don't really care about the anger on that. We have to look at what the pricing is doing. And when everything was crashing last year, I made the videos talking about how they were burning everything to the ground. This year, the prices are stable and upticking. We have to report that the prices are stable and upticking. So now, I want to, before we end this video, I'm going to go into a, just a comment here. I'm going to, before we go into another video of reserve lists and other things like that. Um, as far, I just want to make a quick comment. That about all this chatter about these serialized cards are really doing really well. And old magic and vintage magic and ABU, reserve list, four horsemen, 2000s era, silver era, 2000s sealed boxes, even old, I mean, they continue to be struggling, okay? I'm a big fan. I'm still buying old cards. You know, I'm still getting a lot of contacts. Um, but the market for that is definitely remaining. It has not recovered to pre-Magic 30 levels by far. And I'm not saying it's going to go to zero, although that's a fun meme. It's still going to be a long time. I don't see a quick, easy path forward to make money or flip vintage cards or do buyouts and reserve. I, I just don't see a smooth path like I used to pre-Magic 30 in that environment anymore. And if my attitude and concern is that way, I know many of you all out there are going to feel the same way. But it doesn't mean that the market can turn on a dime or something can change and that most people will miss out like they always do. That's still always an option that's on the table. But right now, to me, I'm going to say it again, and you can make fun of me, but sealed product and even new release magic is not dead. Uh, and I know that makes Rudy the evil shill, this and all these terms people want to use, but the, the looking at the pricing of the market, you know, products that come out, because this, let me just, before we end the video, when a new, let's remind all the new Timmies out there. When a Magic product comes out, I don't expect it to come out and skyrocket. I don't expect Double Masters 2022 from last year to all of a sudden hit new highs at 500 a box. I don't expect it to just shoot and go straight there. I expect it to come out, do really well, and well, as we found out, there was more supply than we thought, Double Masters, so the price eroded down about 20-30% from its highs. Does that make it a failure? No. It was incredibly successful. It's an incredibly good product. And it will, which actually I believe it's already bottomed. It's already been going back up 10-15% of its lows. But it will continue to find its way to three, four, five hundred 500 a box as time marches forward. The more time we put between me and you, and the, the more time we put between the Double Masters release and the day we film the video, the more time that's shoved in there, the more the probability and the more the product's going to drift higher. Because supply will erode, natural attrition, people are going to open it because it's fun to open, and there will be cards that go up in value. That's just the way the card world works. We don't know which one, we don't know how long it's going to take, but that's why I remain positioned with inventory of that, with inventory of everything, so that I can just wait the time, I can sit back and outweigh most people, and I can just wait for the market to turn, and that's what I did in 2022, and so far 2023 is doing very well. And to reinforce this evidence... You can even look at the views when we talk about magic on this channel. The views and the interactions and impressions and comments of the videos talking about everything was crashing and burning last year was some of the highest all-time record of this YouTube channel. No joke. This YouTube channel averages around ten dollars to $15,000 profit a month from YouTube, the views, all the work, the videos, everything. Okay? Last year, 
in the heap of the bear market, this YouTube channel was averaging twenty to thirty thousand dollars per month in revenue, and all because everybody was tuning in because they wanted to see the dumpster fire. So now that we're back to the average, and maybe even a slightly below average, we're averaging now between eight and twelve thousand a month in revenue that this channel makes in profit. Well, I wouldn't say always profit, but in at least the money that's generated. It's not necessarily profit, but the money, the cash that it brings in from the filmings and the work and the videos and not including everything else, but that's how much cash it brings in. Okay, that's the revenue. So it's more in line with the average, but it's also reinforcing that people don't want to hear positivity. People don't want to hear that magic's doing good. It doesn't fit the narrative. It doesn't make people say, ah, oh, Rudy's back to shilling. You know, it doesn't fit what a lot of people want to hear. And I look at Dominar Remastered. I look at Firex, you all be 69. I look at the stepmom, March the Machine. Now the aftermath's about to come out. I look at the products and I'm going, wow. When a product comes out, as long as it can hold its own without collapsing, like Boulder's Gate, and then it usually remains flat, plus or minus 10%, just drifts around the market, depending what store wants to unload or move price. And then once about 12, 24 months hits, goes out of print, flushes the market, and then the product tends to start drifting up because the valve is finally turned off and no new supply is hitting the market. I expect we are back to that kind of behavior. So when I see products come out this year and the price does well, bounces around, just stabilizes, and now months go by, it's now not the newest magic set, it's the second newest magic set, the third newest magic set, and it's still holding strong. And now it's going on the timer until it goes out of print. That's what we want to see. That is a healthy, good market. We didn't get that last year. We are getting that this year. So that's all. So coming up here, we get the March the Machine Aftermath collectors and the Epilogue mini booster boxes. And uh, we're going to be offering patrons some crazy good prices. And we want to see how this thing does. We'll do some box opening, get everything going. That's a summary of the video. Uh, overall, I, uh, I like the direction of everything. I think they're still doing pretty good. I think the magic sets are holding their own. It is a different era. I still don't agree with the flashiness and the amount of variance. I don't agree with the morons at the top who are so disconnected. But I do agree that they are quietly adjusting the print runs, quietly trying to steer the ship correctly. And as we slowly make these changes, it does look like that uh, things are going to be good. And yes, before we end the video, when we cover the Lord of the Rings collector boxes and commander sets for Lord of the Rings coming up, we will be offering that to the patrons at release, and we will be discussing it quite a bit because it is going to be an absolute madhouse. Power, Hasbro's revenue, and that product it could be, in my opinion, the Lord of the Rings collector box. In this, the Lord of the Rings release is probably going to be the largest revenue sales driver in Magic the Gathering history. That's my opinion. The amount of hype, and people ask me about it, is off the charts. It is going to be an all-time record-shattering product. And I think Commander Masters, even though the timing is a little weird, is going to be right behind it. I have no reason to believe otherwise. As always, have a beautiful day. Here's my penis. And be positive, people. Don't let the Debbie Downers. Too many Timmies out there.